Oh my goodness, the engine, yes! Give me more! Oh yes, this is driving, boys and girls! This is driving! You join me on a sunny but slightly wet day in April driving a 1 Series Beamer, which is my current daily driver. I'm a BMW fanboy, I always have been and I probably always will be. I grew up in a family where my dad had nothing but Beamers. He had E21s, E34s, E39s, E60s, he had an Alpina B10 V8, lovely car. But that meant that when I started driving, I didn't stand a chance of driving anything other than BMWs. I've never been interested in anything from Audi or Mercedes. However, there was one Audi that has always tickled my pickle and I've never even been in one or driven one. When it came out, everyone raved about it. Everyone said it's the one Audi that could take it to BMW, take it to Merc and even take it to the M3 of the time. And I am a lucky, lucky boy because today I'm going to drive one. And that Audi is the B7 RS4. Oh. Nice. So this one has got the Recaro wingbacks, which are tasty. And the steering wheel, I think that's the one, out of a Lamborghini. Dreamy. What would Matt say? Oh, it adjusts for rake and reach. I'm like his car, I can actually adjust this for rake as well, which is nice, not rake, reach, there we go. Oh, I'm adjusting my steering wheel position. It makes a big difference in a drag race where you don't steer. Now, from having been in a bunch of Audis, I've never been that much of a fan of the interiors. And this does feel a bit old school, but actually, it feels pretty nice. Okay, there's quite a lot going on down here. The screen looks like something you kind of see off an old Pac-Man machine. And there's quite a lot of buttons in front of the gear stick, but actually the dash and the binnacle and the dials are nice. So Audis, one of the reasons I've never been that interested in Audis is unlike my beloved BMW ultimate driving machines, they've always been known for being a bit understeery, a bit nose heavy. People always talk about the engine being in front of the headlights. But when this one came out, they made the engine a lot lighter and made the front wings aluminium. So actually there wasn't quite so much of that traditional Audi nose heavy behavior. The other thing they did is change the four wheel drive torque split. So a lot of early Audis, Haldex four wheel drive system. This one at standard has a 40-60 front rear split of torque. So even it's kind of standard driving, more torque goes to rear wheels. However, if you consider yourself a bit of a wheel man like some people do and you push on and the going gets a little bit slippery it changes the torque split and at most it'll put 80 percent of the power to the rear so even though it's a four-wheel drive audi when you're really going for it it can behave a bit more like a rear-wheel drive car like the ones i know and love so unlike all other fast Audis that came before this one, including the first RS4, which is fitted with a 2.7 litre twin turbo V6, the Vorsprung Dirk Technik engineers said no to turbo in this one and fitted a 4.2 litre V8 naturally aspirated engine instead with 414 horsepower and an 8,250 RPM red line, which means if I slow down a bit, drop it down to third gear, put my foot down, Oh my days! Yes! Brakes. Wow, that is a lot of grunt. The throttle response is really nice, actually. Very, very responsive. Even cruising around 2,500, 3,000 RPM, you get a lot of response from the throttle. The other thing about this one, I don't know if you can see in the back, but we've got the estate model, or should we say the Avant? 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 Let's go with Avant. So not only have you got 414 horsepower of V8 Audi goodness, you've also got all the room in the back for your dog, for your bike, for taking all the trash to the dump and getting rid of the stuff that you don't want anymore. So practicality, spot on. And for a while really, kind of this era, there was no M3 touring, that didn't exist. You could get a C63 AMG estate, but this was kind of the only other option for a hot, fast estate car. And I don't think cars get much cooler than fast estate cars. And this is a cool car. The interior, yeah, like I said, bit old school, bit quirky. Cup holders, 
Well, it's got a cup holder, some dodgy angle. I don't think I'd fit my Stanley cup in there. So I had a quick look on the, the old eBay motors, eBay classifiers, to see what you can pick them up for. Slightly higher mileage, slightly ropier ones you can get start at kind of 12 grand. The Avance, the estate, seem to command a bit more. Really good ones of these go for a scene up to about 25 grand. So same kind of ballpark that you'd pay for something like an E90 M3. And the other thing about this engine, it's the exact same one they fitted to the first V8 Audi R8. So to be cruising around in your very sensible estate car with the same engine that Audi put in their supercar, that's cool. I'm all for it. Audi launched this RS4 and then only a year or two later, BMW came out with their new M3, the E90, that also had a V8 engine with almost exactly the same power that revved over 8,000 RPM. So that ended up being this car's biggest competition. But you know what? I'm liking this car. I'm liking it a lot. So I'm on some of England's finest, narrow, wet, muddy, slippery B roads. And you know what? When you could have an E90 M3 that's entirely rear wheel drive, or you could have the slight stability and security of a Quattro, it's no bad thing to have this. But I think we owe it to ourselves to press the little S button here, make the exhaust a little bit louder and see what it's like on these roads. Oh my days, it revs. Like the gearing, that was second gear from 30 miles an hour up to 60. And uh, the gearing feels quite long and you think it's gonna hit the red line. It just keeps going. I gotta do that again. That was only 6,000, it had another 2,000 RPM. That is nuts. It revs forever. So that was fourth gear, 2,000 RPM, 40 miles an hour. Put your foot down, you hear the grumble from the V8, 50. 60. Oh yes, Audi, you have produced a banger. And then you see a small little gap in front of you where you can overtake, check your mirror, put your foot down, third gear. Oh, easy. Listen to that. It's still going, revving seven, seven and a half, eight. Holy crap. I have never driven a V8 that revs like that, ever. What did I say, BMW fanboy? This is pretty good. Listen to that. It is such a deep, grumbly V8 as well. The E90 M3 is a little bit more high-pitched, a bit more raspy. I tell you what, if the world eventually goes EV, we will miss cars like this. Cars like this will just stop existing. A V8 estate car with a manual gearbox that you can heel and toe perfectly, that you can rev, you can put it on whatever gear you want. And I tell you what, on this road, this bumpy, horrible, muddy, wet B road, it feels so sure-footed, it feels so planted. To be completely honest, I don't really enjoy driving on the English roads much these days. I don't get much pleasure out of it. It's normally full of traffic, full of idiots driving, full of potholes. But I don't know, when you jump in a car like this and find the right road that suits it, which this one feels like it really does, it really goes. So I've got a memory. When I was a kid, me and my dad went to visit one of his friends who ran a company. He had the early RS4 and he let my dad take it for a drive. And my vivid memory is my dad stopping in the middle of a wet road, knowing this was like a powerful four wheel drive car, seeing how quickly it could launch. And I feel like it's only fair if we do the exact same thing now. So I've turned the ESP off. Listen to that. I've turned the ESP off. We'll see how good the Quattro system does off the line. What do you reckon? Give it some revs. Oh my good, just grips and goes. That's a fast car. That is a fast car. I've driven some cars, Beamers included, on a road like this would pull around horrendously. Every little bump, every little tram line, it would catch and try and send you off into the verge. But actually in this thing, it feels so planted. This is, a per this is literally the perfect road for a four wheel drive, manual V8 Audi RS4. Oh, I love it. the limiter, I found the limiter. I'm sorry for shouting, I just can't help myself when a car is this good to drive and this engaging, which most Audis before this were not at all, you can't help yourself. Oh yes, this is driving boys and girls. This is driving in an Audi. I didn't ever think I would say that, ever.
So what do I think? I spent a day with the RS4. I've driven it on some roads which are prime RS4 Quattro territory. And I'll be honest, on these roads and these conditions today, it's perfect, it's literally perfect. It's got so much stability. With the manual gearbox, even though the revs go on forever and the gears are pretty long, it still encourages you to keep the engine high up in the rev range. So you're always changing gear, always making the most of the revs, always making the most of that incredible noise. If I was in an E90 M3 here today on these roads, I'd probably be sweating a lot more. Oh my days. I love it. I love it so much. So the four wheel drive system on roads like this, like bumpy, wet, muddy British B roads is perfect. Like I wouldn't have anything else. The V8 engine is incredible. It revs to the moon and it's so nice to have a manual gearbox. And even though I'm a massive BMW fanboy, I'll be honest, I want it. I want it so bad. I love it so much. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you liked it, subscribe here, check out more videos over here and we'll catch you next time.